on, let's uh, get it back to inflation. This is the big story today, despite the uh, flip-flop by the regulatory authorities of Orlando yesterday. That's still news that the market street will be dealing with today, whether that will upstage inflation coming in at a more distant 13 point uh, uh, three three percent that's uh, what we're looking at 13.34 percent to be more precise gotta take that exactly it was 14.33 percent in february uh so let's get damilari adisola from financial derivatives into the conversation good morning good morning this is okay. beating you folks at the uh, fdc you don't mind being beaten as an yes, analyst i'm yes. sure you're used to that yes we, in fact we would like for it to, to surpass <laughs> our expectations actually yes. we did um, project a decline but the decline was much um, sharper than we expected. Much deeper. We, yes, much deeper. So, yes. but then the, the the driving factors are still the same. They just had a a, a, a more uh, sharper impact than we expected them to. Have. That is interesting. Mm. Let's come back to inflation a bit later. But let's start uh -huh. with oil, which is one big story on your burning economic issues. This is our crude oil, 72.43 this morning. Yes. The last time before I yes. took my bath was 72.21. Yes. And just before you got here, that has since moved up by at least another close to 50 cents. Yes. Looks like Nigeria is in the money, as we see on the market street. Yes. Well, um, for the thing about um, oil prices, so initially, oil prices were being driven by the trade war, the U.S. Chinese trade war. But then, um, due to the dovish um, statement by the um, Chinese president that um, they were going to um, introduce some intellectual property um, laws as well as they were going to reduce imports on cars that has sort of eased that pressure so we do not expect although yes there's the whole back and forth with the um, US and Russia and there's the tension also maybe even involving Saudi Arabia we feel like th this might be temporary so the geopolitical tensions is not something to really hold on to as a driver of if it's something more um, significant like su um, supply or, or demand then it's more sustainable but when it's geopolitical tensions we tend to just hold on a little bit before we start to to cheer and, and no, 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 I'm, I'm not folks were on, on Twitter and were asking yesterday yes. if I was going to pop champagne again the way I did last time I'm not sure I regretted that yeah. but again when it was 70 and mm -hmm. I said I was going to do it mm -hmm. then we ended up doing it uh, with the, uh, with the with, well, of course with the approval of my mm -hmm. of my bosses in the production room but again yeah. this is 70 we're heading towards 75 can we pin this a little bit to Saudi Arabia? In the last 48 hours, Saudi Arabia has been saying we'll be more comfortable with oil at $80 mm -hmm. a barrel. India is, was warning and saying, hold on a second, that will be very risky. It will be dangerous to have mm -hmm. oil at 80 But Saudi Arabia seems to have a mind of its own mm -hmm. on this particular one. So I'm not surprised we're looking at close to 75 as we speak. Well, so Saudi Arabia is looking to um, list um, its initial um, IPO for its um, Aramco. State company, Aramco, yes. Mm -hmm. So that is the, 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 the major thing, so that it would boost invest, investors' um, investment into the sector if oil prices are reach $80 per barrel. That's what the minister was saying. Push it so to 80 Push it to Do 80. the Aramco IPO? Yes. And list it on Tata World List exchange. it so that they, 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 they get the most profit out of that when they list it at the price being that. And so they are looking to deepen, to deepen their cost. Smart folks. So the OPEC results are coming out um, today for the month of March. So we yes. expect to see um, um, an increased compliance in, with, the, with the cuts with the um, OPEC members. We do expect that U.S. In, um, production, shale production would increase, but I, I, that would be balanced out by the increased demand from um, Asia as well as some emerging economies as well. Uh, where is Nigeria within this? And, and we talked about that when mm -hmm. we started the conversation. Yes, uh, we are around 48.50 as our budget benchmark. 47. 40, For it was 45, but they increased it by two, um, two, two dollars. To, but it's still, right. I mean, 47 uh, and, and 72. So that's still, it is still, it's definitely um, supporting um, our revenues as well. We as have about currency. $35 yes, above benchmark yes. right now. And so it, it would support also the CBN um, government is looking to get us um, over 50 for its excellent reserves. So prices are at this level would definitely support that um, that agenda. So it's it's good for us. It's good, but I would say maybe not just yet get too comfortable yeah, know, with it I because know. yeah, it's it, been touching 70 then 70. One. So uh, maybe, maybe it's, it's finding its, its, its balance. But maybe it's finding a new level. Maybe we could just get out of the 60 level and just and uh, go to, and move to 70. We would hope. We all North hope. of 70. Yes. We all hope. But again, all the hope. flip side of this entire conversation is the price of petrol and with the subsidy or price recovery mm -hmm. that is becoming an albatross around the administration's neck. 
Yeah, so um, the price of petrol actually decreased in the month of, um, of March. It went down by um, about 5% to 163. That's the national average. So, I mean, that's good. I mean, the, the main reason for actually it increasing was because of the false scarcity. So I guess that there's been increased um, production as well as increased um, supply, rather, to the market. So that has helped to um, soften prices. But then that's also been one of the drivers of inflation as well, if you look. I was waiting for you to knock it together for me. Mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the March, if it was in a very decent January, February, and March inflation. So technically, first quarter of 2018 mm -hmm. looks very nice for the Buhari's yes. administration on the inflation front. Yes, it does. Yeah, so um, we, we saw a steep decline in inflation. It's now 13.34 compared to about 17.24 last year. So what it is, what the main driver, there's, there is the base effect because the thing is inflation is, com it's a year on year. If you look at the month on month index, the month on month index actually increased and that is um, in line with our own um, observations that commodity prices that we've been tracking have actually increased. If you look at the prices of rice and the prices of beans and palm oil, they have inc they increased in the month of March. So what while you're saying right now is what the man on the street wants to hear. Yes. So the, while yes, the compared to a year ago, we're in a better place. But compared to a month ago, it seems like which prices is between are, February yes. and March 2018, yes. inflation went up 0.84 percent. Yes, That's month, what the numbers yes, from MBS month, says. Month, yes. yes. Yeah, so as, as we approach the planting season, although food inflation um, dropped sharply to about 16.08 from 17.59, that is um, good news for us. But as we approach, approach the planting season, there would be um, reduced supply of, of food, as always is so it's cyclical. This happens every year. And so we expect that it, um, the inflation, the food inflation would flatten out, and maybe even there may be a point of inflection where it actually starts to increase in the coming months. This food inflation is very, was very surprising for me mm -hmm. as far as the numbers was concerned. This, this is cyclical. Yes, we'll get into the beginning of the rainy season and and mm -hmm. and and, 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 and uh, so planting season. Yeah, uh, planting yeah. begins to uh, uh, come in. Do you think at any point in time, how soon do you think these inflation numbers uh, begin to trickle into the market straight? When I mean market, I mean Price. on the food shelf at mm -hmm. the marketplace where folks buy the basic commodities. Mm -hmm. Well, so there's, a, there's definitely going to be a lag. We expect to see a lag because what inflation tracks is the, is the rate in the increase of prices, not the actual prices, and that compares it to a year ago. But then if you look at um, the drivers, so things like exchange rate, stability, if, um, increased power output, which has reduced the cost. So it's just there's going to be a time lag between when producers pass on these um, reduced costs in form of prices. So um, we do expect inflation to continue to downward trade up until the end of the year, but we expect it to, to, to bottom out eventually. But, but, but the current market uh, survey uh, uh, by you folks, by your team, uh, shows that as the market prices are largely neuter as we speak. Yeah, so well, the, they, they, they're stable now, they're, they're static, um, but in, if in the quarter, as I mentioned, there's been a few, there's been some upward movement in some of the, the if, you, if you would even say those are the staples that hold the, the largest weight, like rice and, and flour, those are the ones with, with that people consume the most, as opposed to um, some um, palm oil, and people consume palm oil, but rice is, 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 a most, is a wider consumed staple. So the prices of, of those ones have been increasing, but the rest largely have stayed, stayed flat, really. So that's really the so, so what does the uh, therefore mean with the falling food inflation when you say okay, the food inflation is trending lower mm -hmm. uh, what, what does it really mean like you said we need actual market data mm -hmm. and not just the year on year folks mm -hmm. want to see what comes from the left pocket to the right pocket mm -hmm. and how does that come into what they eat and drink and, and that's the basic story about the entire inflation Mm -hmm. So month-to-month -month inflation, that is, that, that is a better um, reflection of what is actually happening in the market. And, so, and also it's an indication of where inflation might, might actually end up going because then we'll now then be comparing. So in a year's time, we'll be looking at what happened during this period and how prices increased. So um, I, I, I definitely believe that maybe eventually when, when there's increased output, you know, coming with the budget spending and everything going on, there's been increased spending by the government, you know, in, this, um, last, in the last few months, despite the fact that they haven't passed the budget. So we expect that that would also have an impact on the output. And so usually that uh, increased output usually results in, in, a, in a drop in prices if demand doesn't follow suit. Uh, but, but what will the energy costs, whether it is PMS or electricity, be a major factor uh, as we look beyond the current period? We're now with full January, February and March behind mm -hmm. us.
Yes, definitely. So, um, so we've seen that power output um, as, as well. It's, although in the, in the um, last few weeks it's, it's gone down um, um, significantly, actually. But then if you look at on the whole quarter, so it's much higher than it was the previous quarter. So we've seen a steady increase in power output and also diesel prices are down about 1.5%. So generally this, this is good for, for companies and producers and manufacturers. And so this would help to reduce their operating costs. So it's, it's just a matter of whether they translate this into reduce um, prices. So usually there's a, the time like they want to enjoy some of the, the profit that they get from that before they pass. They get the benefit today. We, the consumers, get the benefits tomorrow. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. look like a fair game. And, well, <laughs> well, they have to make sure that it's, it's, it's permanent. It's not just a blip. And nothing is permanent. Hey, it's not going to be permanent. We need to find a way to rework these things. Uh, because if, if you're getting more electricity, there's a reduced cost mm -hmm. somehow in, in the PMS or, mm -hmm. or, or diesel or whatever, mm -hmm. and then I, I don't get the benefit mm -hmm. uh, until one month or two months later. But before it gets to that time, something happens again, and the manufacturers say, uh, oh, sorry, Boston, uh, uh, you guys can't have uh -huh. bread uh, at a much lower price for now. We just will keep it at that level. Of, so I keep bearing the cost. Well, but reduced costs mm -hmm. also mean that the manufacturer's balance sheet mm -hmm. gets a little bit sweeter. Yes, and we're hoping maybe with the minimum wage review and everything, this might help to ease some of the pressure on the consumer. Maybe those who benefit are those who are buy the shares of this company. At least if mm -hmm. I'm paying 135 or 150 for a price or 350 for a price of bread, mm -hmm. maybe I'm getting something through dividend by buying the shares on the stock maybe, exchange. But I, I, I doubt that the typical average man on the street is really involved in the stock market. No, no, no. no. He wants his bread at 15 naira per yes, the large yes. loaf size. How many slices are there? About, about 16. Uh, about 16? Yeah. You even counted it number of slices? I never counted it. Really? I'm going to buy one yeah. and count it really if it's 16. If it's yeah. more than that, I'll let you know. But very interesting. It's good to have you around. Thank, Thank you. you.